All right. Now, I don't n often do this, but I like to preface some of my sermons sometimes because, you know, a there's all different types of sermons that we preach from the Bible. There's a lot of good news, a lot of great, uh, encouraging, edifying messages that we, that we need to hear when we come together as a church. But there's also a lot of sermons that we need to hear that's going to step on some toes. And I'm going to be stepping on some toes this morning or this afternoon. It's going to happen. Um, it's bound to happen. But just get the spirit right of, of why I'm preaching this sermon and what it's for. So it's, it's not an attack on anybody. This is also not a holier than thou type of an attitude of how much better I am or how much better we are than everyone else. This is, just has to do with sin and getting sin out of our life. Now, Psalm 101 is a very, a very strong passage. And we look to the Old Testament, we look to the New Testament to get our, our teaching, our understanding, and doctrine on what we should be doing. And we see here in Psalm 101, uh, we're going to start reading here again in verse number 2. You know, the Psalm of David, he's saying, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. We all ought to have this attitude. Hey, I'm going to live wisely. I'm going to behave. I'm going to make sure my behavior is wise. I'm using wisdom. I'm doing what's right. And in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. See, this is not the attitude of, well, we come to church and we put on this show and we talk the talk and we can fit in with everyone at church. But when we go home... We just go back to just living however we want to live and, and none of this stuff actually sticks. Now he's talking about going back to his house and being at his house and walking in that perfect way and walking with wisdom even within the confines of his own house. It's one thing to act a certain way in front of a bunch of people. It's another thing to actually have the integrity to believe what the Bible says and not just put on a show. If you're put on a show, nobody cares about that. You may think other people care. I don't care about that. It's not about what other people think about you. It's your walk with God. And we need to remember that. We need to have the attitude that says, I'm going to walk within my house with a perfect heart. Just because no one else can see me, just because you know, I might be able to get away with something and living a certain way, doesn't mean that I'm just going to do that. Because I want to walk within my house with a perfect heart. Verse number 3 says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I'm astounded at this verse that was written so long ago because it's so, I, I think, even more applicable today. I really do. I mean, there, there are so many more technological advancements that we have today with wicked things at our fingertips that we can set before our eyes in our own homes more than ever before. Now, the subject matter, what I'm going to be preaching on is I'm actually continuing on the series that I've, we've been doing for, I don't know, over a month now on being a peculiar people. God has called us out to be a peculiar people, which means we're different. We're supposed to be set apart. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you know, God has a list. He has a, a, a good list of things, commandments for us to follow. Not just suggestions, commandments, ways that we're supposed to be living our life. And we are supposed to be not of this world. We're supposed to be different than the world. Now, we are here to reach the world. We're here to reach the laws. We're here to shed, bring the light and shine the light in the darkness and get people saved and to love the lost and preach the gospel to them. That's why we're here, but we are not supposed to be of them. We're not supposed to just be looking and acting and doing everything just like everybody else, the unsaved world. There is scripture after scripture after scripture, and we're going to go through a few of them uh, later on in this sermon, where the Bible teaches us that we are not to be like that. We are not to, to just be like everyone else and have no difference. We ought to have a difference. And the, the aspect of being a peculiar people that I'm covering this afternoon is our entertainment. Because these things, of being a peculiar people, the, if you weren't here for any of the previous sermons, we're dealing with things that people can just see outwardly. So this is a little bit more than just preaching on a certain doctrine that you believe one way or another, this is actually has an outward manifestation in the way that we live. And I've covered many other topics prior to this one, 
But this, this afternoon, we're, we're going to be hitting on the topic of our entertainment. And specifically, you know, what we choose to put in front of our eyeballs, like movies, TV, or what we decide to put in our ears with our music. The attitude that we ought to have is one that says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Now, if you know something is wicked, how in the world are you going to set that before your eyes? I understand the draw because there is a reason to do it in the flesh. It may make you laugh. It may make you cry. It may make you, you know, evoke some emotions and be gratifying in some way to your flesh to sit down and watch some wicked thing because you are getting entertained by that. It is something that's enjoyable for you to sit down and listen to but, or watch. But that is not the attitude that we need to have. That's, after this sermon, if you go back and, and decide to just set wicked things before your eyes, that's going to be willful sin. Maybe you've been doing it ignorantly to this point. But after today, you're not going to have that same excuse of not knowing what the Bible says and not knowing that Scripture teaches us right here. We're not going to put anything that's wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. This is the attitude that we need to have. If we're going to try to keep ourselves pure and try to keep ourselves right in the eyes of the Lord with our works, we need to hate the work of them that turn aside. Not be buddy-buddy with it, not enjoy it, not actually feast our eyes on the work of all the wicked people and say, hey, I just want to look at what all these wicked people have to do. On the contrary, what he says, he says, Mine eyes, in verse number 6, shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Saying, these are going to be my role models. This is what I'm going to spend my time putting in front of my eyes, putting in front of my face. It's going to be the good people. It's going to be the righteous people. It's not going to be the, the wicked reprobates and the wicked people of this world that are just, just full of iniquity. Why are we going to choose to put that in front of us? Now, I stopped watching the television. I don't even know how long ago. It's, it's hard to remember at this point. It's probably been, it's definitely been at least a decade. I know the progression and the way things have been going with the TV shows. I'm 41 years old. So up until the point I was probably 29, I've been watching TV regularly, been watching movies, everything that came out, everything that Hollywood would put out, everything that's on the TV show, whatever is popular, watching all of that garbage and filth and wickedness. And I know it was wicked back then, and I can't imagine it's gotten any, has, has it gotten any better? Does anyone know? Is it, is, oh, wait, now everything's pure now. Are, are, are there, is it still being promoted you know, people committing adultery and getting divorces and fornicating and drinking and doing drugs and, and all of this stuff that the Bible teaches against as being wicked, is this just being brought up as being normal? Normal part of life. And kind of giving you the adulteress's side of, of, oh, this is why you should have sympathy for the adulteress that cheats on her husband because she has all these problems. And they do their character development on these programs to show, and you know, it's called programs for a reason. Because they're programming you to think a certain way. Media is powerful. The, the TV, music, this is really powerful. The messages that get conveyed into your mind has a lasting impact. Even if you're aware of it, it still is going to impact you. It still desensitizes you. I remember the progression. I remember back when, when it was just unheard of. I mean, at first, they would have you know, the, the, the sodomites, the homosexuals, on the, on the television screen just as, as this, this humor, right? They'd have this real flamboyant, faggy character that everyone could just laugh at. That's the way it was in like the 70s and the 80s. And you have like your threes company and whatever, like all these other shows where you just have your, your, your token sodomite. And they were just there to get a, to get a laugh out of it. Oh, because it's kind of funny. And then I remember when the first movies or shows started coming out where they actually showed like 
a kiss or some type of affection and it's revolting it is revolting and it was revolting and people were outraged by it but then what happened People started getting desensitized the next time it happened. And the next time it happened, people stopped becoming so outraged by it and started accepting, well, this is just the way things are going now. After you've also been crammed by the news, crammed with, the, with the, every other form of media, saying, you need to tolerate this, you need to accept this, we're here to stay, we're out and proud, and, we're, you know, and just cramming this message down your throat ad nauseum. And they, they, they work at it and work at it, work at it, work at it, to the point today where we have people that are supposedly, that are, not just supposedly, they are believers in Jesus Christ. They believe the Bible, they believe God's word, and they're going to criticize and condemn the Christian that's going to speak out against the sodomites and say, they're not welcome here, we have standards, we're not going to put any wickedness before our eyes, and yet we're going to be the ones now that are going to be condemned as, as being wicked. When people are, are calling the wicked righteous and the righteous wicked. These are the days that we're headed to, but you know what? There are going to be some of us that are going to make a stand and say, we're not going to do this. This is nuts. This is crazy what's going on, and we're going to maintain our faithfulness to the Lord. We're actually going to read His Word. We're actually not just going to read it, we're going to apply it because we love it and care about it and we're not just going to say and give lip service to God and say, oh yeah, oh, I'm a Christian, oh, I believe Jesus. No, we're going we're to read and study for ourselves and not just put on a show in front of people, oh yeah, I went to church today, post on Facebook, oh, I had a great time at church and then live the rest of our life like hell. That's not why we're here. If that's why you're here, you know what, there's a lot of other churches that you could go to and you'd fit in just fine because that's what they're all about, but not here. Verse number four says, A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Not only are these people just, you know, is this wickedness is being promulgated through the television set, through the movies, through the TV. You also got the people who want to know everything about these wicked people. You know, it's called People Magazine. And all the other tabloids, all the other magazines out there just following the lives of all these movie stars. And let's face it. I mean, when's the last time you've heard of a movie star that's just some upstanding Christian? You don't hear about it. It's way, how often, though, are you hearing about the multiple divorces, the drunkenness, the drugs... Just the total life of sin and wickedness. That's, that's all the time. It's all the time. I don't want to know the wicked person. I don't have anything to do with them. And I'm dead sure not going to set them in front of my eyes. Turn if you would to Romans chapter 1. It's timely that, that we're covering this passage now. Last week, if you weren't here, I recommend you checking out the sermon. I just po posted it this week from last Sunday, and it, it goes over the reprobate doctrine. I'm not going to cover it this afternoon because there's not enough time. But it's a very, very important subject matter to understand. And the reprobate doctrine, just a real brief overview, is that if you don't know it already, just teaches that there are some people that have been given up on by God. They've become rejected by God. They have become a child of the devil. As much as we become a child of God when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we're born again, we're saved, we have the Holy Spirit, we're secure forever and ever. We have eternal life. There are some people that have eternal damnation because they've made the choice themselves. They chose to reject the gospel, reject Jesus Christ, reject God, and the Bible says as much as they didn't want to keep retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. God rejected them. It's a fact. This is a, this is, this is a biblical truth. There are people out there like this. And in Romans 1, at the very end, it describes the attributes of these people. And we're going to start reading in verse number 29. The Bible says, Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, 
unmerciful. But look at verse number 32. This is what I want to focus in on. The Bible says, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So these reprobates that have all of these attributes, it's not like, you, it, this isn't saying that, well, everybody is a reprobate until you get saved. Because you were disobedient to your parents, right? Because that's on this list. No, this is saying that the reprobate is filled with all of these things. Like this is what defines a reprobate. These are the things that, that is just, it's, that's why it starts off saying they're filled with all unrighteousness. It's just everything wicked. That's what they're, that's what they're all about. And they know the judgment of God. And these reprobates, it's not that they didn't know God. They knew God and they rejected Him. Okay, it's not like they didn't have a chance. They absolutely had a chance and they made a different choice. They know the judgment of God. They know that these things are worthy of death. But not only do they do them and just partake, partake in them and say, I don't care. You know, God puts a death penalty on this stuff. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyways. Not only do they do it, but they have pleasure in everyone else that does them. They enjoy the wickedness that they're into and the wickedness of everyone else that's like them. Now, these people that are being described here, these are some of the worst people in the world. These reprobates. They literally are. If you wonder why, how, how it's even possible for people to exist like the Jeffrey Dahmers of the world. How is it even possible? This is why it's possible. Because God's given them over to a reprobate mind. Now, I want to just make this point real clear. Jump up to verse number 25. Because God, there's a lot of attributes here, but there's something that we could, we don't always know who a reprobate is. You can't always tell. Because some people, they, you know, they've been rejected by God and they had, they're filled with these things on the inside, but, but we don't know that, right? Just, just like the serial killers, so many people didn't know that they were serial killers. You know, they, they put on a good show on the outside. So, so you can't always tell. But there is, there is something that we can know. There is something that's demonstrated that is outward that people can show that will give us a sign that they have already been given up unto reprobation, unto a rejected mind. And if we look at verse number 25 here, the Bible says, who changed the truth of God into a lie. This is talking about the reprobate. They, they knew the truth of God. They changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So this is like their starting point. They hear the truth. They didn't want to know the truth. And they just changed the truth of God into a lie. They made up their own God and, and just made up their own religion or whatever. And then it says in verse 26, for this cause. So that's the reason why. This is what started the whole thing. This is what, what God uses to give them up. It says, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. If you're wondering, if you've ever wondered, how is it that a man can want to be with another man or a woman can just want to be with another woman? If you've ever wondered that, it's boggled your mind and you're thinking like, whenever I'm confronted with this, if I ever think about this, I'm disgusted by it. I'm revolted by it. It's, it's just, it's, it's extremely nasty, sick, vile. How is it that, that there are some people that not only can do that, but enjoy it? And that's what they want to do. Well, according to Scripture, that it's for this cause that God gave them up unto vile affection. What cause? The cause that we had just read in verse number 25. They knew the truth of God. They didn't want to have the truth of God. They worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, and they rejected God. That's the cause why these people even got to the state that they're in. That's the cause. They rejected God, and God in turn rejected them. This is why we have sodomites in the world. You could believe what the scripture says about it, or you could believe, you know, false, you know, science falsely so-called. 
Because even science isn't going to tell you that they're born that way. They're, that's, that's what they want to deceive people and let people think so they can get more sympathy for their cause and just confuse people into thinking, oh, yeah, this is just the way that they're born. No, God doesn't make perverts from the womb. Because it is perverted. It's unnatural. That's, the Bible says it's against nature. They leave the natural use of the woman and they go and do things against nature, contrary to the way that God made them. God made us naturally. He made us naturally do certain things. He's given us a conscience. He's given us direction, even without having to know the scriptures. He, every human innately has these things. We have instruction. We have guidance. We have the conscience. And we have the, that, that guttural instinct that's going to tell you that that's nasty. That's gross. That's perverted. God doesn't make perverts from the womb. They don't become perverts until God gives them over to be able to do that. So what it is is, is that, that natural restriction that God has blessed us with, that we're endowed with, when someone becomes reprobate, that's removed. It's an easy way to think about it. That's just, that's just been removed. Now, not every reprobate is going to go after strange flesh. Not every person who's been rejected is going to go that route, but they easily can. Now it's not as big of a deal anymore. So some people, you won't see the outward manifestation. It might take a while. But when you start seeing people like the sodomites, that is a dead sure sign that they've already been given over to this reprobate mind. Now, what in the world are you doing, Christian? That's going to read this passage and see these attributes and see how wicked it is and then take pleasure in them that do these things and set this in front of your eyes. And I'm going to go see the biggest blockbuster by some sodomite Hollywood movie star or some sodomite Hollywood producer What type of message do you think they're trying to get across to you? Is it going to be a wholesome one? Is it going to be one that, that is going to be a good influence on your mind? Absolutely not. I checked this out online last night. Because this is, this is where we're going to start stepping on toes. You're going to, you're going to hear a lot. And this is, this is scratching the surface. This is, if, you, if you don't realize how rampant this is, this isn't the one or two you know, token people that have come out of the closet that are, that are movie stars. This is rampant. This has been rampant in Hollywood pretty much since its inception. And you could look this up for yourselves. Even on Wikipedia alone, there is a list of 853 gay actors. That's what they call it, gay actors. And when I was just browsing through this list, that's just male names. That's not even talking about the females. This is just, just guys. I mean, 853, how many actors are there in big name movies? I don't know. That's a lot. That seems like a lot to me. When you, especially when you consider the, the sodomite population is somewhere between maybe 2 to 4% of the people. There's a lot of people in that one industry. Now, I didn't recognize all the names, but I would, it would make sense to make that list that they're not just some total nobody that nobody knows at all. Like, how would they even end up on Wikipedia? But here are some of the more famous names. Sodomite movie stars. And just, just remember this. If you're watching these movies and they have these people in it, that they are sodomites. They're haters of God. They're wicked people. They're rejected by God, yet you want to take pleasure in them that do them. Drew Barrymore, Angelina Jolie, Jodie Foster, the even, you know, even going back to the Brady Bunch. You know, the father, Mike Brady, was, was a sodomite. Wholesome show, right? You're, watch, you're watching the dad's a sodomite. George Takai from Star Trek. Neil Patrick Harris, Rosie O'Donnell. How about some shows that have sodomites? Even Good Morning America. 
Employees of sodomite. The Big Bang Theory. Scan I don't know what all these even are, but I just they were popping up, so I figured they might be popular today. Scandal, prisoners, American American horror story showed up I don't know how many times. That show is just full of just open and these are all open sodomites, first of all. Let me explain that as well. These are people who admit to it. Let alone the ones that aren't admitting to it. All of these people are admitting to it that that I'm using in this list. I'm not using hearsay. On this, this is like, this is established. This is, these people are sodomites. Twilight, two and a half men. Roseanne, 30 Rock, Teen Wolf, the Lord of the Rings, X-Men. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings, that was that, the Gandalf guy, right? The old man, pervert, pedophile, sodomite. He's also an X-Men. Spectre, Prison Break, Arrested Development, Modern Family. Oh, you might say, well, I don't watch TV, right? I don't have a TV show. I just watch Netflix. How about Orange is the New Black? Family Ties. I remember watching Family Ties. The, mom is, the mom's a lesbian. Justice League, Will and Grace. Just to name a few. The entire industry is wicked. The entire industry is wicked. You hear about things like the casting couch. Well, you know what they do? Many actors get their jobs doing sodomite work. That's how they get into the business. That's how they get their foot in the door. This is a fact. You may, you may not want to believe it, but there, there are actors that have said this. They, they do say this. They admit it. This isn't even really being hidden. It's not that hard to find if you're actually interested in it. But if you want to be like an ostrich and hide your head in the stand and say, la, 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 I don't want to hear this because I just want to watch the wicked thing and put it in front of my eyes and just get my entertainment that way, you need to get right with God. Because the information's out there available. Nothing I'm saying is conspiracy theory or hearsay. This is all established truth. This is from their own mouths. It seems like they're, they're doing their, their homo work to get in the industry is just like their, in, their initiation into the pervert club. And then they're able to be kept under control with that too, especially if they don't want that coming out. But these days, because everything's just being so accepted anyways, they don't care if it's coming out. They're out and proud being a pervert. They'll march up and down the street and say, yep, I'm a pervert too. Yep, I go after strange flesh and I have vile affections towards people. Yep, I'm a reprobate. But we're being told, yeah, we're being told. That should say something. We're being told that as Christians we need to accept them. Yeah, who's telling you that? Where's that coming from? Think about that for a minute. And I'll tell you what, this is the very reason why there's so many churches that aren't preaching like this anymore. It's because, you know why? because their pastors are setting wicked things in front of their eyes. Because they're not keeping themselves unspotted from the world. They're not keeping themselves pure and righteous. They don't have the heart and the attitude that David had that says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. They're putting it in front of their eyes. They're receiving the programming, just like the world is. So they're going along with the brainwashing. Oh no, we're gonna accept this, this is just fine. And it's not just the actors. The creators of these films are mostly pedophiles, too. You read about the, the attacking and the, the targeting of the child actors. Just read the stories of Corey Haim and Corey Feldman just as, just as an example. Because they've come out with all kinds of stuff of, 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 of being targeted. They're talking about being passed around. And they were popular when I was a kid. Making movies back in the, in the 80s and 90s as teen actors and they're being preyed upon by the perverts in the industry and that that's how the industry operates these are people at the top people producing this, the the films producing this stuff and don't think that you're safe with the older movies either this isn't a new phenomenon maybe you've heard of Katherine Hepburn before and and okay this list 
they might consider them bisexual. You know what? They're still a sodomite. It doesn't matter. If you're, if you're going after the same gender, whether, whether or not you go with the other gender, or, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter. The fact that you do that even one time, or you're just like going after this, and this is what you're, you're burning in your, in your lust towards someone of the same gender, I don't care. I mean, yeah, you know what? They might sleep with animals, too. They're still a sodomite. So you call them bi or whatever. I don't care what the world puts on them. They're all sodomites. Catherine Hepburn, Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy, Greta Garbo, Cary Grant, Randolph Scott, Vincent Price, James Dean. Yeah, macho James Dean. This goes back quite a ways. This is the way industries run, and what they're doing is they're pushing the envelope as far as they think they could get away with it without just being completely cast out. That's why, if you look at some of the older shows, they won't be anywhere as bad as they are today, but they're still, you're still putting wicked people in front of your eyes. And, you know, again, just to be clear, we're not just talking, you know, look, we're all sinners. Everybody's a sinner, but not everybody's a reprobate, okay? Not everyone hates God. Not everyone is just totally rejected of God. There's a huge difference there. That's why I spent so much time even covering that reprobate doctrine I covered last week, because it's, it's critical to understanding why this is such a big deal. These reprobates, this is, this, is where the, this is what the world calls a psychopath. Because when God removes that boundary, that conscience, it, it allows them not only to go with you know, the, same, the same type of flesh with the, you know, doing homosexual acts, but it allows them to do pretty much anything and not have a conscience about it. Think about this. What if a new movie came out starring some well-known psychopath? Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy, right? Ted Bundy, these guys that, that have done these, these horrible acts that are well-known psychopaths. And all of them, I mean, they, they have no conscience. They learn how to wear a mask in public because who they really are is a wicked wolf inside that's, that only cares about themselves and only cares about their own lusts and their own desires and whatever they want to do. But they wear their mask or their sheep's clothing to be able to be out in public and not be spotted as being a wicked wolf. So these are actually really good actors. They learn to be very good actors. So what if they came out with some film? What type of message do you think they're going to try to convey in their film? Is that something that you'd want to watch? I mean, the world today would probably say, no, that's, they're, they're twisted. They're sick. They're sick in the head. I don't want to, to watch what, what they're putting out. And well, how about, how would you, how about you know, financially supporting them? I think any normal person today would say, no, that's ridiculous. Of course I don't want to have anything to do with that. They were all good actors. They wore their masks. They wore their ass melt well into making people think that they could be trusted. So why do you get so excited to go see movies made by other psychopaths? Not every psychopath is a serial killer. Not every reprobate is a homosexual. Not every reprobate is a serial killer. They, they go off into their own just, just mess of depravity, whatever direction that may be. But whether you're a serial killer, whether you're a sodomite, whether you're a, you know, whatever their particular sin that they just want to devolve and degrade into, just down to the lowest depths of that sin, they share being a reprobate and having their conscience seared like a hot iron. That's an attribute that all, all, the, all these attributes they share. But which one actually comes out and what they decide to really get into is, is kind of up to them. But they're all wicked as hell. 
And we need to remember that because this isn't the type of people that you want to be getting your entertainment from. Think about, and I'm going to name some more names here on some actors. Do you ever wonder why there are, there are certain actors that can play such bizarre roles and fit them so well? Think about, think about Jack Nicholson or Johnny Depp or Gary Busey or Christopher Walken or Joaquin Phoenix or Charlie Sheen. They, they play some of these roles that are just bizarre. I mean, Christopher Walken, that guy is a Looney Tunes. That guy is nuts. That guy is a psychopath. All of these people are, though. Jack Nicholson, they get into their characters so well. Why? Because they know how to wear masks. And they can do it really, really, really well. And it's not hard for them to get into the mind of some psychopath because they are a psychopath. They actually feel quite at home portraying whatever. It's not going to bother them. So you watch some movie that could be disturbing. Wow, that character is really disturbing in that movie. That character is being played by somebody. And these people are extremely, I mean, all of those people I mentioned, they're extremely wicked people. They're able to play such bizarre roles because they're crazy themselves. How about Kevin Spacey? He's come out in the news recently. I don't know. It's been the past year or something. Sodomite. Pedophile. Talking about how it's, it's really not that big of a deal. It, with, with, you know, consenting boys of younger age and whatever, like that it doesn't see a big problem with that. How many of his movies have you seen? Not, not as important as how many have you seen. How many do you want to see? I remember when, his, when that movie American Beauty came out. That was disturbing. If any of you have ever seen it, don't go see it if you haven't seen it. But if you have, you might know what I'm talking about. And this is, he played a middle-aged man that had a daughter who had a friend and he was lusting after his daughter's like, like teenage friend and fantasizing and all this other stuff. I mean, that's a pervert. The guy's twisted. I remember the first time I saw that, and I was just like, this is sick. This is disgusting. But just to show you the power of how much this stuff works, a couple years later, I owned that DVD. This is, look, I'm, I'm just confessing my own faults today. It's powerful. Why? Because you get desensitized to this stuff. And you start hearing what everyone else is saying. Oh, wow, this is such a great movie. Oh, this is, you know, he played that character so well. It was just like, oh, yeah, that's just a character. Well, no, you're putting wickedness in front of your eyes. Who wants to see that garbage? We shouldn't. Maybe you did before you came in here today, but hopefully you don't now. Hopefully you want to make a change and do something different. I'm going to just, just to drive this home. I copied a couple sentences from Psychology Today, an online website. And this is going to talk about some psychopathic traits. Now, when I read this list, you just decide for yourself, does this, does this sound like the majority of the, the Hollywood movie stars out there? Just, just throwing that out there. So I'm going to read this for you. Psychopathy, or dissocial personality disorder, Emphasize somewhat more subjective, qualitative, and inferred traits like lack of caring or empathy. Easily formed, but superficial interpersonal attachments. So this is like, they have superficial friendships, but they don't really mean much. They, they have these interpersonal attachments. Low tolerance for frustration. You hear about these, these divas on the set, right? Chronically irritable mood. Absence of conscience, failure to learn from negative consequences. When are they ever going to learn? They keep on going through the same stuff, the same stuff. They're never going to learn. And defensive projection of blame onto others. It's always someone else's fault. Harris PCLR test looks for specific characteristics such as glibness or charismatic charm. Narcissistic grandiosity, need for constant stimulation shallow effect, 
a parasitic lifestyle, sexual promiscuity, multiple brief marriages, and extreme manipulativeness or deceitfulness. I don't know about you, but to me, that, that just nails, I don't know how much percentage of the movie stars practically to a T. This set of behaviors, this set, this is from, and, and Psychology Today wasn't gearing this article towards anyone in particular. This is just talking about psychology. This is talking about psychopaths. Isn't it an amazing fit? You know why it's an amazing fit? Because these people are reprobates. The Bible calls them reprobate. The world calls them psychopath. 1 Timothy 4.1, you don't have to turn there. The Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. These people have their conscience seared. It's, just, it's gone. Not only that, but these, I, I didn't even have this in my notes, but I was doing my research they have different ways of getting into their characters. And that alone is just as I was reading somewhere on um, Nicolas Cage and some of the weirdo things that he does. And he, he calls it like Novo um, Shamana, basically like a new shaman, right? That's, that was, that's whatever, whatever the term was, it's just briefly translated to be a new shaman, which means that he, he's getting into like this witchcraft and black magic type of stuff. And I believe invoking spirits just to, just to help him out in his roles and to really get into the mind of whatever. Like he, uh, there was one role he played where he was like some Ghost, ghost Rider or something? Is that it? it was like he was some spear. Like I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about the movie, but I was, I was, I was reading up on it. So I, I think that's the name. And he's, he's basically like playing this demon type of a guy. So he had to like figure out how to just like instill fear into people. He was, he was literally instilling fear like into his cast by just wearing some really weird stuff and putting this ancient Egyptian artifacts and stuff all over him and like not talking. It's just, it's bizarre. Why? Because the guy is a psychopath. Oh, but he's a great actor. He's a wicked man. I'm not going to put that stuff before my eyes. And you know, the, move, the music industry is no different. No different at all. Everything that we see about the movie stars applies to the music stars. Known sodomites, music industry, Elton John, Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones, David Bowie. Now, the interesting thing about David Bowie is that not only did he have his own music, but he wrote a lot of music for a lot of other people that you probably didn't, never even knew that he was actually the songwriter of just because someone else performed it. And there's a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people that work in the music industry that are just total sodomite reprobates and they're just producing all of this music and then someone else is that, that figurehead for their garbage that they're trying to get into your head. Freddie Mercury which I just saw an ad on Facebook. Now there's some new movie coming out about, about you know, it, because that's some big surprise anyways. The name of the band is Queen. Right? And I don't know if anyone even still listens to them anymore, but I mean, if they're making a movie about them, I imagine some people still do. Well, I mean, they play them in all the, at all the events, right? We will, we will rock you or whatever, or another one bites a day, all these things. That's Queen. That's a sodomite. I'm not going to be rejoicing singing the anthem of a queer. That's not, I'm not going to do it. It may be catchy, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to know a wicked person. I don't want to know their thoughts. I don't want to know anything about them. I just want to know that I need to stay away from them because that's what the Bible is teaching us here. Freddie Mercury of Queen. Yeah, Queen, you know, again, it's, it's pretty obvious. Michael Stipe of R.E.M., Perry Farrell of Jane's Addiction. And you'll even notice some of the names of these bands, you know, Porno for Pyros. But he was, he was commenting, again, that was, that was a little bit of Faith No More, right? The lead singer for Faith No More. Well, there's a shocker, Faith No More. It means he had faith, but he has faith no more. Judas Priest. Yeah, there's another shocker, right? The guy's a sodomite.
Metallica, Kirk Hammond. Well, here, yeah, here's another shocker. Michael Jackson, Ricky Martin, George Michael, right? All these out and proud people. Dave Navarro of Jane's, Jane's Addiction, Red Hot Chili Peppers. And it's not restricted just to like the rock or pop, or whatever. Easy E, died of AIDS. And then on the, the female side, you have the Christina Aguilera, Tony Braxton, Cheryl Crow, Melissa Etheridge, Annie DeFranco, Janet Jackson, Whitney Houston, Janis Joplin, Courtney Love, Madonna, and all of the new whores that are out there today. I don't even know all their names. Kesha, Rihanna, whatever. I don't know. I don't know all these people anymore, but they're all just whores of the industry. And that's obvious. These are not, oh, by the way, these are not the people that you should let your children be hanging posters up of in their bedrooms and idolizing and wanting to be like. And unfortunately, look, I know this from experience too. I, when I was growing up, I was a teenager, I was all into the doors. I was all into Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin was into witchcraft and they put witchcraft on their, on their album cover. And they met with Aleister Crawley which is a total, I mean, one of the most wicked people probably of the generation, Aleister Crawley. Extremely wicked man. And that's who they're consulting with. And, and these, this is what I looked up to. So guess where I started going? I started listening to the music and really loving the music. Oh, and then it's into the drugs. And then it's into their life and learning everything about them and learning everything about a wicked, reprobate of a person. And that... And that brought all kinds of unwanted problems in my life. Bad direction. I wasn't even saved at that point, but this is, you know, I, I wish that I would have had, you know, the upbringing that would at least have kept me from all this. But you know what? I didn't have that, but my kids now are going to grow up without that garbage. And hopefully yours will too. The Bible says in Romans 12 too, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are not to be conformed like the rest of the world and just be like them and conform to them and conform to their entertainment. We need to be different, transformed. Let's, let's make the good guys our heroes. Let's, let's let the, you know, the leaders of the faith and the people who are doing great works for God, they ought to be our heroes. They ought to be the ones that we're, that we're looking to or listening to or putting in front of our eyes, not the wicked works of the devil. Turn, if you would, to James chapter 4. I'm just going to close on this one verse. James chapter 4. a powerful verse. We have to understand the difference between the things of God and the things of the world. The things that are of the world are from the world are not from God and not from the Father and vice versa. They're, they're completely distinct and separate. And dead sure the things that are coming from the children of the devil these reprobates they're not from god that is definitely of the world and in james 4 and verse number 4 the bible says ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with god whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of god now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be considered an enemy of God. But if you want to be an enemy of God, go ahead and make friends with the world. Do like the world do. Watch what the world watches. Listen to what the world listens to. Fit right in with the world. And guess what? You're going to make yourself an enemy of God. Because the friendship of this world is enmity with God. Not something to take lightly. This is, that's God's word. Okay, this is what it says. You can hate me for, for bringing this topic up, you know, whatever. But you decide for yourself if, if what I'm saying is true. 
And more importantly, what the Bible actually teaches on this, what it's saying. If we're going to understand, it's pretty clear we should set no wicked thing before our eyes. Well, what is wickedness? Adultery, witchcraft, fornication, sodomy, right? All these things are all, is there, is there any doubt about that? Drunkenness. It's wicked. Are you going to go home and just put that in front of your eyes? I'm just going to put all this wickedness in front of my eyes. That's, that's going to do real good for my, for my walk with God. No, it won't. We need to get right today. We need to get right with God and, and care about His words and live the life every single day of the week. As far as I have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank You so much for this opportunity to, to be here today and to hear... These, uh, these truths from your word. God, I pray that you would please help us to get just more firmly grounded and founded in your words, to love your words, dear Lord, to love, to love the good and to hate the evil and to not want to have anything to do with wickedness, dear Lord. I know we still have this flesh and I know that none of us are perfect, God, but help us just because we have this flesh, Lord, help us to not walk in this flesh. We, we can choose and we can do what's right. We don't have to just give in to the lust of our flesh, Lord. We could be strong. And I pray that you would please give us that strength that we need and that, and that we wouldn't um, even allow ourselves to be tempted with all the, the wickedness of this world and that we can just focus on, on getting our hearts and our minds right by putting only proper things before us, Lord. And um, just, just help us to, to have the strength to do this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.